so we just rolled into 2022. I figured today would be a great time to chat about some of my favorite shortcuts and features in Pro Tools from the past year. So this is my first video that I'm filming for 2022 in the year 2022. And I was going to do this towards the end of last year, but then I decided to take some time off for the holidays. So thanks for being cool about that. But what I wanted to do is do a weird kind of nerdy recap of the year of sorts and talk about some of my favorite shortcuts and features within Pro Tools that I really got into this year. So in this video, I'm going to try to avoid covering stuff that I have already covered a million times before, try to make it a little more interesting than that. And I'm also going to avoid stuff that I've been using since I first started using Pro Tools. So stuff like, you know, um, Command Shift N to create a new track or Command Equals to switch between the mix and the edit window, all the basic stuff that a lot of us have probably already been using since day one. So I've tried to keep this list a little more interesting, but let me know what you think. So the first one on this list is a new one for me this year, and I've really been using it a lot since I discovered it. And that's the idea if you're in something like grid mode, right, and you try to adjust, for example, a fade or trim the edge of a clip, it jumps to the, the grid marker, the grid location. Grid marker is not the right word. The grid lines. It jumps to the grid lines. What you can actually do is if you hold command while you click and drag, it kind of automatically shifts you into slip mode, so to speak, while you're holding command. So so then you can go between grid lines and you can adjust things a little more precisely without having to shift between edit modes. So instead of having to switch over into slip mode, I can just stay in grid mode, especially this is especially handy if you're working on music and then you just hold command and click and drag. So that's a relatively new one for me. I've been using that a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. So that's definitely one of my new favorites for the year. Another one that I've been using for years, but I still use it a ton, would be, I have a few things that have to do with plugins that I use a lot. So one is you can command click to bypass a plugin. So I don't have to open up the plugin and click the bypass button. I can command click. That's something I've covered before on this channel. You can also option, hold option down, and then click and drag to a different track, and it will copy over your plugin with all all the same settings on it. So that's one that I use on every single session that seems to come up at some point. Same with the command clicking. And then another one that's more new for me this year, I think it's new for me this year, I really started using it this year, is uh, Shift A on track. So if I highlight a track and then I do Shift A, what it does is it bypasses all the plugins that are on that track at once. So I can either bypass or activate them all at once. So that's great for kind of A-B testing what you're working on. And I think I've covered those on my Instagram Reels. And I think maybe occasionally on my YouTube videos, but I just kind of wanted to put them all in one place. I find those three plugin shortcuts to be really, really, really handy. I use them all the time now. And you know, shifting into number three on my list, this also has to do with plugins. So if you open up a plugin and you click on this little red square, what you can do is you can open up multiple plugins. And I've shown that before on my channel. I'm not sure if it was on Instagram or on, here on YouTube, but I've shown it before. Another thing that's really handy that you can use is you can actually do the same exact thing if you just hold shift and then click on the plugin. So you'll notice I held shift and I clicked on this de-esser here. So here's the panel for it. Here it is. It just opened up and it automatically opened up with that red square uh, deactivated, not lit up. So now I can open up more plugins very easily here. So that's another really handy shortcut that you can use in relation to plugins. You just hold shift and click and it opens it up in the mode that allows you to open up more plugins on top of it. So another one that I've used for years is the shortcut to jump to a marker. And my students know this one really well, but basically if you look at the number for a marker, I like to put the number that the marker is in the actual name of the marker. So you'll notice this one's number two. So for the name, I wrote two colon, and then I have a descriptor of some sort. And I do that because I really use the shortcut to jump between markers a lot. So if you're on the numeric keypad, you just go period and then the number for the marker and then period. So I just did period two period. It has to be on the numeric keypad. And then your cursor will jump to that marker. So you can use this really easily for bouncing, right? So I can go period three period, and it brings me to this marker over here at the start, which is number three. And now I'm ready to bounce this. Um, it's just a scratch track session so far. So I, I, you know, whatever. But now I'm ready to bounce it if I want start to end. And it's handy for jumping around in your session in other ways as well. Uh, you don't just have to use it for highlighting for your bounce. It, it's good for navigating. I'll usually mark like choruses and verses and stuff like that, the bridge with a marker, sometimes other locations, right? And then I will 
uh, more easily bounce around within the session using those shortcuts. If, especially if it's a spot that I keep returning to, I'll remember the number after a little while of working on the project. So, so yeah, that's period. And then the number for the marker and then period, it all has to be on the numeric keypad and that will jump you to the location for that marker. So another thing that I've started using a ton this year that I didn't use in previous years especially is using folders to stay organized. So this is a ish kind of new feature in Pro Tools. It's not that new, to be honest. I think it's a couple years old by now, a few years old. But I just started using it this year. And you'll notice in this session, I have a folder here. Um, these are just old scratch tracks. We've been working on the orchestration for this piece, working on the different parts, working on... Um, figuring out what the song's going to end up being. And so I have some old scratch tracks that we no longer need, and I've put them into this folder so I don't have to look at them. And now I can make the folder little and only look at it if I want to. And I kind of like having the folder there. It's kind of just optics, right? Whether you prefer to do that or do something like hide the tracks, that's really up to you. Um, just keep in mind if you hide the tracks, you'll still hear them. You have to mute them if you don't want to hear them. But uh, I've, I've kind of gotten... Uh, more accustomed to using folders to help stay organized. It kind of keeps them there and visually present so you don't forget that they're there while at the same time kind of allowing you to tuck them away and not contribute to the clutter as much. Another one that I use all the time, this one I've been using for years, so this is kind of more <laughs> in the category that I said I might not share a lot, but I do see people getting confused about this a lot. And that's the idea that you can do command K to toggle pre-roll and post-roll on and off in Pro Tools. And I'm mentioning this one because I see students do this by accident all the time. They'll accidentally hit Command K somehow, and then when they hit Spacebar to play, they actually hear the playback start at the pre-roll flag, and they get really confused as to why, hey, I clicked over here and I hit play, but it's playing over here. Why is that? And it's just Command K. So you can deactivate that by hitting Command K. I'll do that right now. You can see the little flag go, uh, I guess that's like a white or a gray and you can activate it by hitting Command-K again. So it just toggles on and off. Pre-roll is really handy for recording. We don't need it so much for mixing. So I just wanted to include that one there because I've seen a lot of my students get really frustrated with it. And it is a really handy shortcut to know, right? If you're recording with someone, time is of the essence, especially if you have a client in paying by the hour. So it's a good one to know. Okay, another one that's really handy. Let's say you are working in a session and you get way in there, right? So you're zoomed way in, you're working on something, and you're like, all right, let's take a step back and listen to it. You can just hit option A on your keyboard and that'll open it up so that you see the entire length of the session. So it's adjusting your zoom setting so that you're viewing the entire session. So you'll notice if I zoom out further, I don't have any content past where it just zoomed me to. So option A brings you so that your entire session, all your content within your session is within that window. So it's a, a quick zoom out to see everything at once uh, shortcut. So my last two shortcuts for this list. So roughly this list, I guess, is stuff that I've either gotten really into and started using all the time this year in Pro Tools or stuff that I found very, very useful and continue to find useful uh, in Pro Tools this year. But they have to do with the edit modes and the edit tools. So if you look at the top left of your keyboard, you have an escape key and then you have a key underneath that. It's like a little squiggly, like open apostrophe key. And I guess I'll put an image of it on the screen somewhere. Maybe what you can do is you can hit the escape key to toggle between the different edit tools. So see how my edit tools up here are toggling. That's just me hitting the escape key over and over. And or you can hit this little uh, like tilde open apostrophe key that's right below the escape key to toggle between the different edit modes. So that's pretty cool. And I think one of the reasons why these two shortcuts are on the list now, the escape key to toggle between the different edit tools and this little apostrophe key to toggle between the modes. I think these became useful to me and I started using these more because I got this new computer. And this computer, it's not super new at this point. I got it shortly after lockdown started. So how long has that been? <laughs> it's been over a year, I think. And um, basically, my OS is still overriding my F keys. So I used to use F1, F2, F3, and F4 to switch between shuffle, slip, spot, and grid, respectively. And then I would use F5, X, F6, F7, F8, 
F9 and F10 to switch between the different edit tools. So from left to right, those are the tools, right? So F5 is the zoom tool, F6 is the trimmer, F7 is the selector, F8 is, oops, I bumped my mic, F8 is the grabber. And then if you want the smart tool, you can do any of those three keys for that at once. So I could do F6 and F7 at once to get the smart tool, F7 and F8. So I used to use those. But now my OS is still overriding this and I have been super lazy, like super, super, super lazy. And I haven't fixed that so that I can use those. So now I just either click or I use the escape or the little apostrophe, whatever, whatever it is, tilde apostrophe, whatever this key is, I use it. So I guess that's the end of my list. Yeah. So that's it. That's my list. A bunch of stuff that I got into this year, a bunch of stuff that I've been using for years, but I'm still excited about. You know, I'd love to hear in the comments below what features or shortcuts you got really into using this year in Pro Tools, what you found to be like super useful, what would be on your list of things that you got pumped about this year for one reason or another. So let me know that in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all that stuff. I come out with a new video every Wednesday and I do have a Patreon. So so it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. We have a Discord channel we're all hanging out on. We have a book club on the Discord channel. There's some additional content on my website for uh, Patreon patrons, although I have been focusing on the Discord channel more recently, just so you guys know. But uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all you guys. Uh, happy New Year. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm not feeling confident today. <sighs> I find all of those shortcuts and features, they're all shortcuts. <laughs> cool. What are my stories? Oh, my bunny wasn't feeling good last night. She wasn't feeling good at all, so I had to watch her. I... I had to wake up like every hour and a half to check on her. And now she's fine. She's a lot better now. But she um, she was going in this thing called GI stasis, which can be really deadly for rabbits. Like within a day, it can kill them, I think, sometimes. It's, it's really scary. But I force fed her to keep things going. So I had a little feeding syringe and some powdered food that you mix with water that's supposed to help keep their GI tract going. And I gave her some medicine, and now she's feeling much better. She's her usual sassy self now. So um, I'm very happy about that. But I also didn't sleep. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, and I got a couple more 57s for my studio. So I posted about it on Instagram. One's just a regular 57, and the one's one of the modded ones where they, ha they have it at a right angle. So if you want to see that, go check out my Instagram. It's at Kato Noise. Okay, I'm sleepy, so I'm going to go now. I'll talk to you guys later.